Hello! So this week I'm going to be making a lavender chemise a la reine. I was super inspired by my friend Maggie who made a pink one for our photo weekend a couple weeks ago. And I don't know why, but I had never thought to make a pastel chemise a la reine because like usually you see them in their white. That sounded cute to me. Like I really wanted to make a chemise all around just generally but when I saw her pink one I was like I need to make a pastel one immediately so that's the plan for this week I'm gonna be going to a lavender festival this weekend with Maggie so we're gonna wear our chemises all around we'll be wearing our dresses together and I'll have a lavender one to match lavender and she'll be pink again and it'll be very cute I'm very excited so that's the plan for this week mostly it should be fairly simple I'm gonna be following the instructions on fresh fripperies blog so she has kind of like a cutting diagram and she shows how she made it I am not sure if I'm going to do what fresh frippery suggests and what is like historically accurate and put um, like a drawstring channel and gather it all up through a drawstring or do what Maggie did on hers She has a tutorial on TikTok. You should check her out. Her account is zombie spaceship Her tutorial is a little bit different because instead of doing a drawstring that she uses to gather up the like all of the fabric She instead gathered it separately and then just stitched a flat casing along it that she threaded like a string through so she could tie it closed so with fresh frippery's version the gathering all happens because of the drawstring whereas with maggie's chemise all around she gathered it first and then stitched a channel onto it the drawstring method is more historically accurate however i think that gathering it and then stitching it on makes it easier to wear because then you're not having to like arrange the gathers every single time you make it and i also think it just generally looks a little cleaner if you're not going to be wearing it with a belt i haven't decided if i'm going to wear it with a belt or not yet so i think probably what i'm going to do is i'm going to do what maggie did and gather everything separately and then stitch a casing on top of all of the gathers so those gathers are in there permanently it just makes wearing it a lot easier um but if i end up running short on time and decide that I don't want to sit there gathering a whole bunch of fabric then I will just stitch the channel onto the flat fabric. Kind of my general thoughts so far it should be a fairly simple and fairly quick build so I, I'm excited that I'll get a fluffy dress out of this at the end. <laughs> my fabric was very kindly bought by Micah's mom so I wanted to thank her on camera for buying me this fabric. Um, we went to the fabric store while Micah went and got a massage and uh, she just offered to pay for my fabric. It was very nice of her so thank you for the fabric. I really appreciate it. But that's pretty much the plan. It should be a fairly quick project. I'm gonna be dyeing the fabric today and then mostly it's just kind of assemble large sheets of fabric, gather them up, and then you have a dress. Very quick. But before we get started on the dress, I wanted to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to help you explore your creativity and learn new skills. I've used Skillshare for years to learn so many new things, ranging from how to design your own fashion line, to how to run a clothing business, to daily habits for boosting your like creativity and mindfulness. But the one class that I come back to over and over again is one by Don Don Leo about filmmaking. How to film solo without the FOMO, filmmaking tricks for the one person crew. <laughs> So that title is really a mouthful, but it's a perfect description of what you're gonna learn. This is really the class that helped me get started on YouTube, and because I get so many requests for advice on how you guys can start your own channel, I really wanted to share this one. There are a lot of great tips like shooting the same action over and over again to get lots of different angles and focal lengths, and adding sound effects to make your videos more immersive. Did you guys know that a lot of my rain sounds are fake? So I do film while it's raining, but because I'm splicing so many clips together, the rain sounds would be very inconsistent. So I use a rain sound effect to get a more cohesive immersive sound and I learned that in Dan Dan's class. So if you guys want to learn some cool new things you should definitely give Skillshare a try. I put a link in the description where the first 1,000 people to use my link will get a one month free trial. does hers with three panels of 55 inch wide fabric that are 55 inches long. She said that she's 5'6", but she wanted it short for dancing. But I like mine to be long and flowy, so I'm making mine super long. American Duchess also made this, and 
wrote about it on her blog and she made her 60 inches. I think she's a little bit taller than me or maybe quite a bit taller than me, but I've made mine 60 inches because I figure I have the fabric for it, so why not? And then if it's too long, I can always cut it off at the end. I'm gonna stitch those together and then do some like cutting to make the dip for the neckline and the armholes and stuff. And you also like leave part of it ungathered for the armholes as well. Both Fresh Frippery and American Duchess did do fitted sleeves, but I like the look of the really big puffy sleeve, so I'm gonna be doing that instead. I've also cut a couple rectangles of cotton to stabilize the straps so that when they're like taking a bunch of strain, this isn't the strap, but like it's pretty sturdy fabric, but it's also very thin fabric, so I want a little bit more stability, and Fresh Frippery did suggest doing that, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna get these stitched together, then I'm gonna cut the dip into the neckline, the arms, all of that, and then I guess figure out where it needs to be gathered. So let's just stitch some stuff together first. <laughs> We're going completely off of what is uh, accurate or anything, but because the neckline and the neck ruffle get put together and both are gathered, there's nothing really to anchor them normally. This doesn't matter when you have a drawstring going through it because the drawstring will pull everything up. But if you sew a gathered edge to a gathered edge, it'll just like slide around everywhere. So I've stuck a piece of twill tape into the front of this. So the ruffle will go on like this and that'll end up covering the twill tape there. This stuff is kind of transparent, so if this is just going to be one layer, you'd be able to see it, but because it's going to be gathered up so much, it should be fairly opaque, like you shouldn't be able to see it behind all the gathers. Hopefully that will look okay. I think it should be entirely hidden, but that's kind of my uh, little cheat for um, making sure that this stays gathered and doesn't pull apart as I'm wearing it. So now I'm gonna add the ruffle to the neckline and I think that I am gonna hand stitch on just so I can whip around where I'm stitching these two pieces together because a machine stitch is just not gonna look very nice. So I'm gonna do a hand stitch just cause it'll end up looking nicer. My fitting backdrop is very ugly right now, so I'm just gonna continue using this one, even though it's like not really super conducive to fitting, cause it's kind of busy, but I've got the ruffle on here, and now I gotta like figure out where all these gathers go here, so that's, that's why I've got it on. It looks a little bit like a frilly hospital gown, so hopefully that will change once it's like actually a dress. It's, it's, it's a look right now so so hopefully it improves um yeah i'm gonna go find some fabric ties elastic things so i can tie them um and then i guess i should put this on inside out but basically what i'm gonna do is tie this around here and then use a piece of chalk to mark and then theoretically that should give me a good line okay i think the necklines look about where i want them to be for the front and the back I think the straps look pretty even, right? Okay, so I'm gonna tie the waist one first, I think, cause that'll give me a good anchor. And then I'll do the, the like under bust one second. This is gonna get closed up in the front eventually so that it's not like just open here. But we'll get there when we get there. I don't know if this is like actually correct or not at this point. I'm literally just kind of copying Maggie's. Hope that's okay, Maggie. Baby bat. Do you want to come in? No? Okay. I think for the underarm, I'm going to have to lower this a bit just because this, this is just, it's too poofy here. There's too much going on. So I think I'm going to cut 
a little bit out and I was supposed to do that originally I just kind of forgot so we'll we'll just do that we'll just do that now right now I'm just kind of tugging all of this stuff in so it's not bunchy in the middle so it stays fairly flat oh I'll make you girl hello look at this sweet lady girl <gasps> oh she purr she purr what a sweetie okay where are you going all right then i've got this blue chalk and i'm just gonna mark where these things touch and that should that should do it normally i don't like using blue chalk so i used blue chalk once uh when i was in my first year of grad school and i didn't really know what i was doing i used it to mark up this white brocade that was for a mock-up thankfully it was for a mock-up but it made these big blue marks all over the mock-up and the girl who was like i was first handing for so like when you make stuff for shows you uh, you can't see me when you make stuff for shows you have like the draper and then you have the first hand so i was first hand for this girl and she was like you used blue chalk on everything i was like yeah it showed up really well it's just like oh no <laughs> you're supposed to make marks that are like not super visible but because this is purple the blue will actually probably stick out the least besides like white but i want it to be enough that i will be able to see it easily and i think the white will just kind of wipe away too easily so blue is very close for this actually so i'm gonna use that so i'm just literally marking all around and i'm doing the back here i'm just kind of doing it by feel because i can't see it very well that was the bottom one so let's get the top one now okay. i think that should be good let's see let's take this one off great it's gonna be kind of a broken line because of all the gathers but it should give me like something to start with so woohoo i'm gonna just make these lines a little bit more solid lay it down on the table you know like connect everything and then i can gather it all
super happy with how this dress turned out. I think that it's really cute and it's like very easily wearable. It's super comfortable and very lightweight and like I was so hot and sweaty at the Lavender Festival but it was like not not comfortable uh, with the dress but it was bearable with the dress. We actually went to the Lavender Festival thinking that we were going to change into like shorter dresses that were less long sleeves and less long skirt and all that because that might be more comfortable and then we thought about it and because the dresses that we had brought were like a heavier fabric and mine was a lot tighter than the chemise all around like it just wasn't worth it this is actually like the most comfortable option so <laughs> i'm very happy about that because i really hate being hot and sweaty the general construction of it too i think also is just like it went really quickly i didn't really mess up so that's always a plus but even though like everything turned out really well I still want to go through a couple parts of it I first I want to talk about the dyeing process so the ribbons and the fabric ended up slightly different shades of purple the cotton fabric ended up more cool toned whereas the ribbon ended up more warm toned and I think that's because Rit dye is just kind of a universal dye and I was using two different fibers. So the fabric was cotton and the ribbon was silk. And Rit dye is kind of a catch-all dye. So normally when you dye fabric, you kind of pick your dye based on what fiber you're using. So normally if I was dyeing cotton, I would use a fiber reactive dye. That's what you use for plant-based fibers. And then if I was dyeing a silk, I would be using an acid dye. And acid dyes are what you use for any protein fiber. So that's like wool, silk, I can't think of any else. <laughs> but for wool and silk, you use an acid dye. And if you ever uh, dyed your hair with Kool-Aid as a kid or like knew somebody who did, that's kind of the same process because technically our hair is like a fiber protein and Kool-Aid is an acid dye because you put citric acid in it. What RIT does is they put a fiber reactive dye and they put an acid dye and then also some other additives like the citric acid and salt and fixatives and they dump all of that into one thing. But the way that dye works, plant-based and protein-based fibers take dye a little bit differently. So I think that's one of the reasons that those ended up differently. The other thing that I think caused those two to take things differently, I did dye them in separate dye baths and I did the ribbon for slightly less time than I did the fabric because it was such a small amount and because I didn't want to damage the silk at all. I wasn't worried about damaging the cotton because it's pretty hard to damage cotton, but silk you can damage. So. I did this silk for last time and the way that dye particles work is that they have different strike times. And by strike time I mean how fast it adheres to the fabric. So the red particles of dye attach to the fabric faster. So when I was dyeing the cotton it did appear to be very red at first. It was a much warmer toned purple. But then the blue dye particles will strike a little bit later. So when I left the cotton fabric in the dye for a little bit longer it was able to also absorb the blue dye particles as well as the red dye particles that had adhered earlier in the process. Because I left the silk in for a little bit less time, it didn't have as much time for the blue dye particles to adhere because they have a longer strike time. Uh, so that's just kind of like a quick rundown of dyeing fabric. If you guys want like a more in-depth video on dyeing fabric, I can try to do that. I had a full year of fabric dyeing in grad school so i have lots of information but that was kind of the first part of this process that i think didn't go exactly perfectly or didn't go exactly how i had planned but i honestly don't mind that they're slightly different shades i think it looks like a design choice so it's not a problem basically if you make a mistake and you can say yes that looks like it could have been intentional then it's a design choice and don't let anybody tell you otherwise Everything else went pretty according to plan. The decision to pre-gather everything versus to do a drawstring casing and like gather it up as I wore it was kind of made for me because I didn't have enough of the width of ribbon I wanted to use to do an entire drawstring. So like if I had just done the drawstring, I would have had to sew it along the entire width of that fabric and that's three panels basically. They cut a little bit off of the center front of each of the two front panels just so that it was not super bulky in the front and then less bulky in the back. I wanted it to be fairly even. So I did cut a little bit off of that, but it was still like two widths of 45 inches and then a 55 inch. So that's like um, about 150 inches, a little bit less. So I would have had to have like 150 inches of ribbon to go along the drawstring channel just once and then I also had to do that a second time. But because I gathered it all up and then stitched the ribbon on, I only needed enough to get over that gathered part. So that ended up being closer to like 30, 35 inches 
uh, even with like the bow and stuff. That meant that I needed to use far less ribbon, something more along the lines of like 100 inches total rather than like 350 inches when you also include the arm ties. So it was kind of a decision that was made for me by my use of materials. Um, that was kind of my stash usage this project was using ribbons that I already had. I don't know if it actually really counts that much. This project took me longer than I thought it would, but not because like each action took longer. It was mostly just because I had a really big procrastination problem on this project because I got super distracted a lot of the time. I was ending up just like doing like a couple items and then going off and doing something else for the rest of the day. So uh, this project took me probably the hours of about a day or a day and a half, but I spanned it over a week. But I got everything done before our lavender festival trip, so it worked out in the end. <laughs> The other thing that I did that was different from what Maggie did and from anything that I've seen anybody else do on the internet is that I stuck two hooks and eyes where it closes in the center front. So normally you would just tie it shut and it would be shut, great. But because I used silk satin ribbons, they're kind of slippery. So every time I was tying it, they were kind of slowly uh, pulling apart because they didn't have enough friction to hold a bow really well. So my solution to that was if I hook it together first and then tie the bow on top, you can't see the hook. And it also takes a little bit of strain off of the ribbon itself. So that won't degrade over time. And then also it just keeps it from sliding open and exposing me. But I think that's pretty much it. Those were the main things that I changed. I refer to Fresh Fripperies and American Duchess's blog posts really frequently throughout this whole process. So those two blogs are like really good comprehensive guides to it. So if video format is not your kind of thing and you would like to see more of a written tutorial, I'll link those in the description because they were very comprehensive and like very easy to follow. I also made things very quick and easy on myself by machine sewing literally everything. I think the only things that I really did by hand were the closures because, you know, you can't really sew hooks and eyes by machine. And then I stitched the sleeves and the ruffle on by hand. Other than that, everything else was sewn entirely by machine. All my gathering, all of my ribbons, all of the hem, uh, like all the side seams, all by machine. Went very fast. Highly recommend because like it's so voluminous that nobody's gonna see your scenes anyways. If you want to do it by hand though, like you totally can. Nobody's gonna stop you. So, you know, just do it however you feel like, but don't feel bad if you're doing it by machine. <laughs> That's pretty much all I've got for today. I really hope you guys liked this video. I had a lot of fun making this because it went very quickly and it was very satisfying. And then I also had a lot of fun filming this reveal. It was very very uncomfortably hot, but I got to cut a bunch of lavender and take some lavender home and now my kitchen smells really nice and have some fun times with friends and you know, it's just a nice time. So, and I didn't get stung by any bees even though there were a lot of bees there. And finally, I wanna thank Skillshare again for sponsoring this video. If you click the link in my description, the first 1,000 people to join will get a one month free trial. And that's it. If you have any questions about the process or about anything else, um, just drop that in the comments. I love to hear from you guys. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out. And if you wanna see my other projects in the future, then please subscribe. I'd love to have you here. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.